Now, this is a multiplication table right here, all right? And multiplication tables, it, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, recommend that you memorize all of these. Now, it may seem like a lot, all right? But when you consider that when you multiply by zero, which is this first column, it's just zero. Anything multiplied by zero, zero. It's like saying you'd have zero groups of something, which is also what this top row tells us right here, the zeros, right? Um, like if you had, or, or like this, seven groups of zero, seven groups of zero here, that'd be zero. So, yeah, and this is, that's how this works is you look at the row and column, that's the multiplication. So, like if I looked at 25 right here, right, I would follow to the row, and that would tell me one of the factors, which in this case is five. Oh, and I guess I didn't really mean for this to happen, but the other factor is also five. All right, or if I wanted to look at, uh, well, let's look at 99 right here, okay? Well, then the two factors that make up 99 are 11 and nine, like this. Or in other words, nine times 11 is 99. So if we, if that's one way to look at this for with starting with the products, but if you wanted to start with a problem, right? If I said, uh, oh, what is seven times eight? Well, then I could look at seven in the column and eight in the row. And all I'm gonna do is follow these until they meet, right? So I'd say there's the eight column and uh, here's the seven row. Wherever those two lines meet, that's the product, which in this case is 56. So seven times eight is 56. Now that's using the table. We really want you to just memorize these very uh, basic multiplication facts. So in the future, if I say seven times eight, it'd be nice if you knew that right off the bat because you have seven times eight memorized. And it may help to put this up in a place that you go often. Um, you know, some people like to put it in their bathroom because they spend a lot of time there, whatever, whatever's good for you. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to like frame it, but if you wanted to, hey, that's up to you, all right? All right, this multiplication table, what you'll notice is if we split this diagonally this way from the X right there, um, if you look at, I don't know, it's reflection, we'll say, right? If you look at reflections across this line, the numbers match. And that's because the order of these doesn't matter, right? Like right here, this would be uh, nine times eight, whereas this one would be eight times nine right there. So they're going to match on either side, which really means even though this looks like a lot of values that you have to memorize, there's not as many as you may think just initially. But because they do reflect over this line through the middle, um, if you can memorize just one side of this, then it works out pretty well. Also, uh, like the bulk of the memorization really takes place in here. Like if you don't want to memorize past 10, I would me recommend memorizing 10 because you can see a pattern here, right? Uh, whatever you multiply by 10, you just tack a zero onto the end of that and then you have your product. Uh, 11s kind of follow the same pattern with the 11, uh, just double the numbers, but 12s may not be so obvious. But if you can memorize up to the 12s, that'd be great. But definitely, definitely have memorized up to the 10s. All right. And then as you get more used to those, then I would say expand to your 11s and 12s. So multipl multiplying, let's do some of these problems. So we're going to start with 6 times 1. So I'm going to say the first factor, I'm going to use the column for the first factor, this column. And for the second factor, I'm going to use this row, right? The top row there. So I'd say, all right, I got to find 6 in uh, the column, which is here. And I've got to find one in the row, which is right here. Now, something else you may have noticed with the table is that one just kind of matches whatever it's multiplying. And that actually creates a rule for us, which is going to come later. Uh, but it's something that if we, can, if we can know that anything multiplied by one is itself, that will help us today as well. So that creates a rule. Anything times one is itself. Like here, one times six should be six, right? So I'd say, all right, you know, I'm going to follow six to the ones and the ones to the six. 
and uh, wherever they meet, that's the res that is my my actual product, which in this case is six. All right, so eight times seven, so I look for eight in the column here. I found it, and then I look for seven in the row, and I found this one as well. But I need to follow these um, row and column until they meet. So I say, okay, there's the seven, and there's the eight, and they meet at 56, which means that would be the product, 56. And the next one, three times three, so I start with three in the column. It's just the same number in the row, three and three. So I would follow these together. Three down to three, and three over to three. And yeah, we see this product is nine. Now I'm showing this with the table, but again, it would be very nice if you guys had this stuff memorized. It'll be definitely helpful, uh, it'll definitely make your calculations go by much faster, which was gonna free up time for you anyways. Now zero times four, um, whether you need this or not, we should know anything times zero is zero, which creates its own property, but we're gonna do this with the table. So I'd say, okay, my first factor is zero, so I find it in the column. My second factor is four, so I find it in the row. And again, we're just looking for where these two uh, meet. So I find my uh, column all the way to the row four and then the four down to the zero column. And yeah, that's a product right there of zero, which is what we should expect when we multiply by zero. So finally, nine times nine. Yeah, I find nine in my column right there. And then I find nine in the row up here. And yeah, we just didn't want to find where these two meet. I'd say nine over to nine here-ish. And then I follow the nine down into the nine. Yep, looks like we end with 81 right there. That would be our product of nine and nine. Multiplication is, is I would say it's a big difference between going from addition and subtraction into multiplication. Um, Right, I mean, you know, like nine times nine, for example. You know, I mean, you, you could do that with multiple, uh, addition, rather. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nines. Uh, but you can see, I mean, even if you just said, you know, I'm only gonna stick with the addition and I'm never gonna do multiplication, you could, but I mean, nine times nine, that was pretty brutal right there, just writing all those nines. But just think about what it's gonna be like when it's like, hey, 21 times nine. Okay, are you gonna really, write out 21 nines, probably not, and then have to add them, probably not, okay? But again, having that knowledge of what it is is crucial because it's important to know what, where the 81 comes from. And you could, you could work this out if you'd like to, uh, but multiplication gives us a nice shortcut um, with addition.